Hey there, and thanks for watching. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a use case in which I use ChatGPT plus the new plugin features that were recently released here, May 2023, uh, but used ChatGPT as an analyst, as a real estate analyst, in order to research information I needed for a tax appeal. Now, this is entirely hypothetical, uh, but I wanted to play around with these new plugins and Zillow has released a plugin. And so I, while I recognize in commercial real estate, Zillow is not particularly useful, I could imagine that plugins to similar data sets relevant to commercial real estate, say CoStar uh, or others, uh, will be built. I hopefully that they're built and we will be able to use plugins together with those data sets to do some really incredible things. So over the next few minutes, you'll see the conversation that I had with ChatGPT together with access to Zillow's data in order to assemble comps, build out a table, and really everything I needed for a tax appeal on a residential property. So let's get started. What you're looking at here is the tax assessor webpage for El Paso County, Colorado and a property in El Paso County, Colorado in a city called Monument. And this is the tax assessment information for this particular property. It's public record and what you'll see is that currently the tax assessed market value for this property is 742,821. And then we see all the relevant details of this property. And how Colorado works is uh, at the beginning of the assessment period, the tax assessor will send out their uh, expected value or, or, or their concluded value for a given property. And then the landowner or the property owner has some period to appeal. And the appeal is quite simple. There's a little button here. So you go to your property and you click appeals and then you fill out a series of forms. And it's really the reason for your appeal, the value that you think uh, your property is actually worth rather than the value that the tax assessor had assigned to it and then supporting documentation. And so over the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how I use ChatGPT to assemble supporting documentation for this particular property. Now I have no relation to the property. Uh, th this is not meant as uh, you know, advice around how I would actually value this property. It's more as an exercise to show you the power of ChatGPT as a real estate analyst such that as this tool and uh, data providers begin to plug into the tool, we can really use it to speed along the analysis process. So let's go ahead and look at the chat. Now I'm going, here I have ChatGPT. This is the May 13, 2023 version. It's constantly changing. So likely when you're watching this video, this has already changed. And when you choose a new chat now, you have the option currently, again, as of May 13, 2023, to choose between your GPT 3.5. And assuming you're a chat GPT plus member, you have this GPT four. But what's cool, if you click the drop down, you have the option between just your default GPT four or the plugins. Now what plugins are is the ability for chat GPT to have access to data sets that it currently doesn't have access to. And so as soon as you choose plugins, there's a drop down menu that appears immediately be below that. And you scroll here and you have this plugin store. And again, this is very much in its infancy as of May 13th, but you'll see that uh, plugins have begun to populate the chat GPT store. And you can look at new plugins, you can look at most popular, you can look at all plugins. And I have personally selected plugins like Open Table for uh, finding the right restaurants and places, kayak for um, finding flights and hotels and, and using ChatGPT as an assistant for those exercises. Wolfram, which is kind of math computations, uh, real-time data. Uh, and then there's a whole, whole variety of plugins here. If we go to the list, you'll see everything from uh, EDX, find courses and content from leading universities. Uh, I'm just randomly scrolling through. Um, Tab log allows you to find restaurants in Japan. WebPilot browse a QA web page, generate articles from one or more URLs. Um, here's the Zillow data that we'll be looking at here currently. So you get the sense. Um, 
right now there's roughly 75 plugins in the store, uh, but I would imagine that will grow to millions as people begin to, to plug this tool into their data sets or, or use it in new and unique ways. So what I have selected here is I chose, I installed several plugins, Ask Your PDF, which allows me to drop in a PDF and then have ChatGPT analyze it for me. Uh, I mentioned Open Table, so I have a, a variety. I'm going to choose Zillow. And you can choose up to three. And what that means is in your conversation with ChatGPT, ChatGPT will have access to those three plugins. But in this case, all we need is Zillow. And let me go and I'll show you the actual conversation I had with ChatGPT. So here's that conversation. And I started with a prompt, what is the value of the home located at that address? And what ChatGPT did is it th thought about it for a second, and then it went to Zillow and sent a request to Zillow, which was just simply an address. And Zillow responded with a bunch of information, price, its Zestimate, it's rent estimate, bathrooms, bedrooms, and so forth. So this is all the data that Zillow responded with once ChatGPT went there. And again, now think of ChatGPT as an analyst. And so we asked our analyst, hey, what's the value of a home located at some address or again, a property? And ChatGPT in a very simple way went to some data source, in this case Zillow, and came back with the home located at that address is currently valued at this amount, 619,200. Remember, this is important because El Paso County thinks it's worth 742. This is a single family home with, and then it drops all the details of the home and so forth. And then it gives you a link where you can click this and you can go and actually look at the details that are on Zillow's page. All right, that, that's interesting. So I said, okay, well, the most recent tax assessed value for this home is 742A21. I need your help in doing the necessary research to appeal this value. Please find, and, and now this is my prompt, and you'll find as I go through this, and you think of a prompt, again, it's instructions to your analyst, five comparable properties within the Woodmore neighborhood of Monument, Colorado, that's where this property is located, that supports a value of 620,000. So what we wanna say, okay, yeah, we're 742 is the tax assessed value. Uh, we think based on a couple different things, including where Zillow prices it or values this, we think the value should be assessed closer to 620. We're gonna, going to appeal and suggest to the tax assessor that it's worth 620. And we're gonna, and, and the analyst, ChatGPT in this case, is gonna help us with that. And we say the comparable property should have sold in the last 12 months and should be a similar size and age. And so the first thing that's interesting, uh, the AI goes to Zillow, asks for some info in the neighborhood Woodmore, and Zillow can't find anything. My guess is, because I, I, I'm sure Woodmore is a, a relatively large neighborhood, my guess is that Zillow calls it something different in its database, and therefore uh, nothing was returned. And so ChatGPT says, hey, I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to find any comparable properties in the Wood Woodmore neighborhood of Monument, Colorado. The real estate market can fluctuate, and then gives me kind of a, a templated response. And I say, okay, let's expand the search to homes of similar size and, size and age within a two mile radius of the subject property. All right, now we're talking. So again, ChatGPT goes to Zillow, makes that request, and out from that comes all sorts of info, right? Five properties that have the characteristics that we need for our appeal. And ChatGPT comes back after reading that uh, data dump from Zillow. Here are five comparable properties within a two mile radius of our address that have sold in the past 12 months. And then they list them and each one of these have a link and then they've got some nice pretty pictures so we can get a sense of that, right? And that's helpful. Now we're, now we're talking. Uh, these properties should provide a good basis for your tax assessment appeal. Now again, keep in mind, uh, this is an analyst who has very little knowledge at this point. So as, as a real estate professional, when you work with your analyst, you got to recognize that your analyst is still learning. And so in practice, what we would do is we would then dig into these comps to really see if they're a fit or not. Um, at this point in time, we're just going to assume that they are because this is an exercise in showing you the power of this tool and getting you thinking about where this is going in the future. So I say, great, please create a table and now this is the support that we'll have to provide to the, the county assessor in the form of an Excel with each property together with, and then I start with some columns. Now, my prompt, 
prompt isn't complete here, and you'll see in the coming uh, conversation back and forth, ChatGPT produces a table for me, which is really helpful. And I can now just copy this table, paste it into Excel, use that as the supporting documentation that I would need for an appeal. And then uh, ChatGPT mentions, hey, the garage size information is not available in the data that I have. And that's interesting. So I say, okay, let's expand this. First off, I ask it to look up the garage size from Zillow. Uh, I I'm making an assumption with that, that when ChatGPT went out and asked Zillow, Zillow did not return with the garage size, but we could go back and ask for the garage size. I also ask it to add a few elements to the table, living area, sale price and date sold. And then I want a row immediately below the comparable properties that calculates the average of the comparable properties for each column. And then I want a new row with the subject property at the bottom. That way we can compare the comp set, the average against that subject property. Again, goes back to, to Zillow. I won't bore you with the data feed, but you get a sense now a new table is produced based on that information. Now there's something I noticed. The first time that ChatGPT went out and found comps, it had this 308 Sabre Creek Drive. And if I come up here, you see 308 Sabre Creek Drive. Look at the price, sold for 550. When it comes back down here, sold for 795. Again, th this tool is not perfect. And so I, I, just like your analyst won't be perfect. And there, there has to be a validation step where you're validating the information that is being fed to you in the same way that you validate the information that your analyst is feeding to you. So anyway, uh, the, uh, the AI produces this table. I say, and, and, and it reminds me, hey, unfortunately, garage size information is not available in the data that I have. So even though it went back, it still couldn't find a garage size, it continues to show NA. Also interesting, it drops NA for date sold. And we'll, we'll address that in a minute. So then I go, okay, let's add a land size column to the table. Again, goes to the data, comes back, adds a land size in acres. Now, as I was looking at the table, I went, okay, hold on a second. The living area all ranges from call it 2,500 to 4,200 square feet, such that we have an average of 3,582. And yet the subject property, according to ChatGPT's read of the data is only 1961. I went, oh, that doesn't make sense. First off, why did, why did ChatGPT ask for properties that were larger size? And, and second, where does this 1961 come from? So what I did, there's a few options. I could have gone to the Zillow data. I just simply went to the county assessor data and I see, okay, there's 1961, that's above grade. But there's a 1,280 square foot basement, 818 square feet of which is finished. And so to me, to, be, to make it fully comparable, it should be 961 plus the 818. And so I say the subject property living area is 1961 above grade with a 1,280 square foot basement, 818 square feet finished. Let's update the table to include the finished basement square footage in the table. Now, ChatGPT read that and said, hey, let's create a new, a new column, call it finished basement square footage, and show those two. The problem is I haven't added finished basement square footage for the other properties, and I have two options at this point. Ask it to go back, find out if it has a basement, if it does drop in the basement square footage, and have the living square footage be net of that which is, an, is one option. And if I were to really dig into this, that's probably the option I would go. And then I'd have a third column, that, uh, or maybe I have above grade and below grade, and then I have a third column that's total living area. To keep this simple, all I did is I said, hmm, that's not what I was looking for. I just wanted you to add 818 to the 1691 for living area. Please do that and remove the finished basement square footage column. Also, and I decided just to give up on the garage size. Let's delete that column. I could have pushed harder. Uh, I could have asked it to go back to the, to the Zillow data one more time and look for the garage size specifically. And it might've got it. You'll see it here in a second with the data, date sold. Uh, or I could have manually gone to the Zillow data, found the garage size, dropped it into the column. And I probably would have if I was doing this in practice. But for this exercise, I just had it remove the garage size column. Uh, the tool apologizes for the misunderstanding, updates the table. And now I've got, 2779, which is still on the low end of the comp set in terms of living area, uh, but a closer. 
I also have the land size. And so what you have here is an assumption of a value that's approximately 620,000. I have a comp set. Uh, I would want to validate these sale prices given that the Saber Creek was wrong. Uh, my analyst, Chad GPT, got that wrong in the first place. And it seems odd that all of them are 550,000. Uh, in fact, let's do that as our, as our, our uh, final step here together. But it did complete the average column correctly. Uh, it's not weighted by any uh, metric. So these are unweighted averages. But it's interesting to see that average column. And then we can compare. And, and this is now approaching a very supportable data set that could be used for an appeal. Then again, it says, please note that the date sold information is not available. And that's where I said, okay, excellent. Looks like we're close. I need you to find the date sold information. <laughs> so I was not satisfied with ChatGPT's response that the date sold information is not available. I said, it's available via Zillow. So please go back and ask Zillow for that information and then update the table. And I'll tell you what, when I, I, I typed that out and I thought, I wonder if it's, <laughs> I wonder if this will work. Sure enough, went back to Zillow and that's reflected in these requests and responses and out came a date sold. Now it did caveat it say, with saying, please note that the date sold information is estimated and might not be accurate. For the most accurate information, please refer to the individual property links, which we could then do. And likely we should, right? Again, as, as a good manager, our, one of our roles our, as a good real estate professional is to validate the information that our, our analyst is feeding to us. I say, excellent, looks great, thank you. Now, that was my conclusion when I ran through this, and it was fun to see ChatGPT say, you're welcome. If you have any questions or need further help, feel free to ask, and then says, good luck with your tax assessment appeal. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this to me is a glimpse into the future of commercial real estate analysis, using tools like this to speed along the analysis and uh, not necessarily replacing analysts because analysts are number one in the current state of commercial real estate, data entry professionals, Excel gurus, Argus gurus, a research analyst and all of that. Uh, this will accelerate or, or speed up the, the, the time at which it takes an analyst to come to perform this work. But the other important role to keep in mind about an analyst is to get seasoned so that that analyst can grow, grow into a professional uh, that is actually transacting. And so to completely eliminate analysts would eliminate that important training step. But certainly you can see now that as this tool gets plugged into commercial real estate data sets and because it becomes more advanced, I mean, we're very much in the infancy uh, of this tool that the role of an analyst in real estate is going to completely change. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, drop them either in the comment section below on YouTube or shoot us a message if you're on adventuresincre.com. Otherwise, thanks for your time.